Yeah, yeah, check one, two, check one, two. Is this mic on? Is this mic on? Hey, listen, man. It's the one and only Trent set of DJ Sense, and you're listening to Cocktails. Dirty Discussions with Kiki and Medina Monroe. Yeah. Today's cocktail is called Sex in the Hot Springs. So the ingredients called for are vodka, Midori, and some ginger ale. So you're going to mix in a cocktail shaker, the shot of vodka, a splash of Midori, and a shot of ginger ale, and strain into a martini glass. And that gives you a Sex in the Hot Springs. Mm. (laughs) Is this Dipsy or is this cocktail? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> what is going on? Anyway, welcome back to Cocktails Dirty Discussions, you guys. Hey, y'all. It has been so long since we've been in the studio. It's been like three weeks. Oh, my gosh. And it feels longer than that. I've really? been in Costa Rica for about 10 years. Okay. That <laughs> was a very long needed trip. But it was when, you know, when you go on a long trip and you start getting to the point where you're like, I'm sick of like wiping my butt and putting the toilet paper in the trash. I want to yes. be able to flush. Yes. <laughs> oh, it was one of those. But it was amazing, bro. Uh-huh. Like, you've been to Costa Rica. Yeah. I've been. It's a beautiful place. It really is. One of the number one places for wellness. It has um, a blue zone there. I think it has two different blue zones there where they're the healthiest people in the world. There are people that live to be 120 years old. Oh, child, that's a long time. I'm going to be ready to... Peace out. It, yeah, that's, that's long. It's like, well, but they are vibrant and healthy because of their diets. So mm-hmm. they're not like, you know, crippled and stuff. But uh, it was amazing, bro. Um if y'all want to see more about it, I, I it'll be on my YouTube channel probably oh, cool. in the next two weeks because it's a lot of footage. Went to the holistic doctor, got uh-huh. some injections. Uh, that what, was interesting. What did they give you? We'll see on my YouTube channel. Okay. Um, but it was scary, but cool. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you look like you're still scared. <laughs> I am. Like, you still am I going to turn into an ogre in a couple of days? <laughs> Girl, I don't know. I guess we'll see. Um, so let me think. What has happened since the last time we were in the studio? I know I've gone out of town a lot. A lot. Yeah, and I'm leaving in a couple of days. I don't have any weekends here. That's I don't fun. Think, yeah. Atlanta has really been like, I just work here, kind of. This is like and your I, Airbnb state city. Yeah, yeah, that's what it feels like. So I am going to Dallas this weekend, and Deep I home? am looking forward to it. Um, I ordered so many matching outfits for me and my nieces, and then I was like, my, ah! mom, <laughs> my mom and my other sister— and the sister that's their mom is going to be mad. So then I ordered them some. But then I was like, well, Sandra and Margo, her baby, mm-hmm. are going to go to the fair with us. I think they need matching suits, too. <laughs> so then I ordered them I some. And I was like, that. I don't know if they're going to wear it, but at least they could just have it. Don't you love being an auntie? I do. It is a really precious gift. Like, I hope I love my own kids as much as I love my niece and my nieces and nephew. Yeah, I just love it. I am so looking forward to it. It's going to be so much fun. But... Last, was it last week? No, the weekend before. I did spend last weekend here, and I'm glad that I did because I actually have a cocktail about it. Oh, a good one or a good one. Okay. A good one. Um, But the weekend before, I was in Houston. Mm -hmm. And so Howard's homecoming got canceled, y'all. So I ended up going to TSU's homecoming. Because of COVID? Yeah. So they're still, they're doing a hybrid homecoming, whatever the fuck that is. What are we supposed to do? Take shots on Zoom? Like, I'm not participating in that. I'm sorry, Howard. That's a little odd. Well, I don't think that that's what it was. But, you know, they have all this stuff that you can just watch. I'm not doing that. Ain't nobody gonna watch. And that's fine. People go for the tailgate. Okay. We're there for the camaraderie. But whatever. I was like, well, still... HBCU, I've never been. I'm going to be in Houston anyway. It was a lot of stuff going on. I got some cocktails from the TSU tailgate. I got some cocktails from after the tailgate. I mean, I've got some material for you guys, and I haven't decided what all I'm going to share on here, but I ran, you know, I haven't been talking to Voodoo Dick. I didn't know that. I yeah, you, I like, didn't see wild. him a few times just because you had other dick, but I didn't know it was like, I'm done with voodoo dick. No, yeah, I w- was done. Oh. And I saw him at the fucking tailgate. Well, he saw me. Maybe that's what I'll tell y'all about what happened today. I don't want to tell I too much because we just, we're just in the beginning of the episode. That's sounding real juicy. I can't wait to hear it on a cocktail. Before we dive a little bit deeper into our catch up, we want to make sure you guys know that we got a giveaway. Oh, yes, we have a giveaway. Yes, I'm actually wearing 
wearing one of the Crave Vespers. They're coming out with a new one, though, and we are going to pick five lucky listeners to win it. Uh, you need to send us your juiciest cocktail um, about your best experience with a toy, with a toy. Send us a cocktail about an experience you've had with a toy. And it could be a toy by yourself or a toy with a partner, a mm. toy with a group. It does not matter. Send it to us. So we are giving away five, but some of those are strictly for patrons. So if you want to up your chances, then you should join Patreon and submit it through Patreon because that'll increase your chances. But yeah, we're giving away five Vespers. If you don't want to wait for um, the Vesper, you can always use the code and just buy your own if you mm -hmm. don't want to wait for the giveaway. Um, use our code and you will get a free engraving. We did um, get a new code, so it's no longer cocktails. It is now Love Tales. So use the code Love Tales for a free engraving or you can send us your juiciest cocktail about you and a toy and whoever else to our email um, by October 31st and we're going to announce the winner on the November 4th episode. Make sure when you send that email in the subject line put Vesper so we know you're not just sending a regular old cocktail for us yeah. to read in the show which we still appreciate but if it's for the contest put Vesper in the subject line. And then also include your Instagram in the cocktail at the bottom of it. We won't share that with anyone but just share include that because you also need to be following the cocktails page and the Love Crave Instagram account to be eligible to win. Yes. Okay, uh, so we'll put all those details in the description box. Because that was a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I can't wait to hear the cocktails though. And just so y'all know, like bet like a good story with a with a involving a toy, it could be even a good funny story, like how the the anal plug got stuck in the hallways of my booty Ooh, hole that one night. That, that was a pretty good story to tell. One. So just yeah. a great story involving a toy. Mm -hmm. Um doesn't always end in you coming, but the Vesper will end in you coming and it's a great yes, conversation it will. piece. Just make sure you don't do like I did and leave it somewhere oh man i know where it's at i just have to go retrieve it okay Aww. so um <laughs> i wanted to give a quick little shout out girl our listeners be showing up and showing out and the fact that a lot of them paid to come on this expensive wellness retreat in costa rica and there were some reoccurring offenders from jamaica that came to costa rica it was a super dope experience to get to connect with listeners on an intimate level. If you had a chance to listen to the bonus episode from last Monday, um, I I got together with two of the listeners that came. Shout out to Ogo, shout out to Janice, and we did a bonus episode. And it was just us sitting in the jungle talking about, you know, how they like the show, talking about their dating experiences, just mm -hmm. regular girl talking. It was phenomenal to be able to see the type of people that we could bring out. Yeah. One is in med school. One is like, does something with finances, like high up for a company. Just shout out to the, the girls that came. And it was amazing. Um, that I see, is pretty cool. It was super into, dope. I ran into a lot of listeners. Now, we didn't get to have any intimate moments. Mm -hmm. They may have seen me having some intimate moments while we was out and about. But let me tell you, I was standing outside of my hotel one day and these girls, I was so scared. I was like, oh my God, which one of their men am I fucking? Because the Isn't way- that crazy? <laughs> That's the first thought. They'd be like, uh. They zoomed in the little driveway. I'm standing outside waiting on my friends to come pick me up and I'm like on FaceTime with my family and the girls are like, Kiki! And they're all like hanging out the car and I was like, yeah, <laughs> what's up? Hey. Who's man am I fucking? Maybe. Like, who's asking? And so they ran up to me they just like the show and then when I was out at the club there were lots of people there and I was like Houston y'all love us out here I love y'all back I mean it's really it always amazing feels good. and I always like to reiterate if don't nobody love the attention Kiki and Medina Monroe <laughs> love it we love we it do. when y'all there were some girls on the on the retreat that don't know that I know but they were there because of cocktails and they did they were like we don't want to make her feel weird you're not gonna make me feel weird and I don't know how many times I have to say this and I'm speaking <laughs> for Kiki too if you see me out with a nigga that is the time don't think that I want my privacy I want you to roll up and be like you Medina from cocktails I sure do <laughs> Let that nigga know I'm that bitch. Like, let him know. Like, y'all stop playing. Ain't nobody mean around these parts. Like, oh, my goodness. Um, but while I was there, I got you a souvenir. I did? Yeah, I did. And I also wanted to say, Kiki, thank you. So First of all, you got to try these coffee chocolates. They're okay, amazing. thank you. I got you this cute little Pura Vida, Pura Vida bracelet. Oh, thank you. Uh, that's a saying that, th that was the where we stayed yeah. at, but it's also like a saying that the Costa Rican saying, it's like simple life. It's like, I don't know mm -hmm. what that Spanish it says in the back of the heart, but I know it probably says something really meaningful. I'm but gonna ask my new boo. It's like a, 
Oh, he, uh, hola, papi. We gonna talk about it. Oh, Jesus. I'm excited. But I also wanted to really thank you for my affirmations book that you gave me for my oh, birthday. You're and Did my you bring journal. It with you? I didn't. But when I got back, I've created a routine for myself that I learned on the wellness retreat that creating a morning routine that is for you, not something mm-hmm. getting ready for work, something that is getting your mind ready for the day. Yeah. And the affirmations book is really helping me. And Good. the journal, like I've been writing in my journal and uh-huh. I just really appreciate that. I also read my card. I was late reading it because I I was getting ready Russian, for Costa Rica. Yeah. But I just really appreciate it. And thank you so You're much, welcome. Kiki. I love you. Love you too. I would cry if I was drunk already. <laughs> yeah, I probably would too. But I just beat this face. We're not crying yet. <laughs> We're not crying yet. And we we got a guest for the next episode. So we can't fine. be cutting up too early. Yeah. Um, what okay, wait. Um, yet another pregnancy scare and I really be ha- keep having pregnancy scares I'm childish man. bro I was about to say we're too grown I be having the most ch- but it's like me I be like I can feel the baby growing in my stomach the day after and it's like I just be really scared and really what it is is I need to incorporate into my routine a workout plan because mm-hmm. my stomach was just looking real big oh, and okay. I was like the baby is clearly going to be a boy because it's dropped down and low you know how they be saying on the this. next day yeah and I was like <laughs> this and, and then my baby who was going to be my baby daddy it was going to be real like that upsetting. was a sandwich it and was some wine <laughs> it was a sandwich a couple shots of tequila um i did put it on my youtube channel make sure y'all check it out and my dad watched it my dad <gasps> called me and she was like said? i watched her pregnancy scares and makeup youtube video i sent it to your cousins i was like oh my god dad, why would you do that but he's just so supportive i appreciate it but <sighs> pregnancy scares are just not fun and i just need to get more responsible yeah good luck with that i hope that you do you ain't never had one during covid during COVID, no. Or these past I mean, couple weekends? <laughs> okay, no. sorry. I'm trying to get the tea on what the fuck <laughs> happened. Uh, we'll talk about that later. I told you. Okay, so look, now um, we're going to go ahead and move on to weird sex before we get into the rest of the discussion for today's episode. You said a man is not a necessity. A man is a luxury. Like dessert. <laughs> yeah. A man is absolutely not a necessity. Did you mean that to sound... Mean and bitter? Oh, not at all. I adore dessert. I love men. I think men are the coolest. But you don't really need them to live. Okay, so this week's weird sex. This man just got sentenced to 48 years in prison, which I feel like is not enough. It should have just been truly life with no parole. Um, And he should just stay in there forever. Let me tell y'all what this man did to his son. This man killed his son because his son found out about, you know, a little kink that he had. So the dad liked to dress up in women's lingerie and heels. And he had all these pictures of it. I don't know. I can't remember if the pictures were like in a box on a phone or Mm -hmm. what. But the son found them. It freaked him out. Like, what the fuck are you doing? And he didn't want to visit his dad anymore. His parents aren't together. So the little boy was telling his parents and he confided in a friend about what he saw because he was so freaked out. Well, the dad got mad and knew that's what it was, confronted him about it. And he ended up killing him because I guess he didn't want anyone to know. And he killed his own son over that and got sentenced to 48 years in prison. That is some psycho shit. Like, if this is your kink, this is your kink. If it's what you're into, it's what you're into. And I understand that, like, people may make you feel bad or uncomfortable for it, but it doesn't ever warrant you killing somebody. It's not like the son tried to kill you. You killed him because he didn't want to be around you, and that's unfortunate, but maybe this is an opportunity to talk to your child about, one, stop going through my shit, and two, you know... Uh, you need to have some talks with your children. You need to have some talks with your children. You definitely don't need to be killing them. Yes, everybody was sending me that that story for weird sex. And it was one of those things where there's a lot of um, news coverage on it. So if you want to read more up on that story, you can. It's all over the this internet. happened in America? Yeah. Wow, that's sad, man. Mm-hmm. Rest in peace to that little boy. Yeah, bless all his because heart. you discovered your daddy's fetish. I'll be so pissed. I'm haunting y'all for the rest of your lives. Yeah, you, I'm sure you would. Yeah, I sure would. That's okay. rude. So, moving on <clears throat> to our discussion. Let me see. Let me we see. We have a few different topics to discuss this week that are pretty interesting and pretty relatable, I feel like, to to a lot of people listening and to ourselves. Uh-huh. Um, the busier we get, uh, whether it's making time for yourself or you work or different business ventures, do you think that it is hard to make time to date? Like, do you have, are you finding yourself having to like schedule in date time? Yeah. 
But I like my day. (laughs) I like my day scheduled anyway. I don't really like the last minute thing. The last minute thing is cool if I already like you. Mm -hmm. Like you can call me and then just ask me to do something right then. But don't encroach on my time. Mm -hmm. Because I might say yes and that's irresponsible. And it's really more about me and my issues Mm -hmm. with managing my time than anybody else. But it is hard. And it's like, okay, well, let me just, as I'm planning out my week, I've really been trying to do a better job of writing it down, putting it in my Google calendar. That's what I was about to say. Do you actually pull out a calendar if a guy's like, I want to take you out? Are you pulling up your calendar and you're like, hey, okay, so I'm out of time. From mm-hmm. the 5th to the 10th, I have a gap on the 11th and the 13th from 1 to 3. From the 20th to the 27th, yeah. I might be gone. Yeah, but I need my dates to be within the next week or two. Mm-hmm. So I've been trying to slow down on planning too far in advance. Mm-hmm. But I've been rolling with like three weeks. But yeah, I will look at my calendar and be like, oh, well, I have a little gap of time here. I'm going out of town here, but you can meet me there if you want to meet me there and we do something there. Mm-hmm. That's possible if you got it like that. Um, but yeah, it's, it's hard because... I'm so busy. Like, I don't have as much free time as I did maybe five years ago. So that makes it harder. And then it's like, it's also harder for me to agree to take that little bit of actual free time that I have Mm -hmm. and spend it with somebody. Because it's like, if I'm not that interested and I feel like it's going to be pulling teeth to have a conversation with you, I don't want to go. Or if the conversation we had before the date just wasn't that interesting, unless I'm super bored, Mm -hmm. I don't want to go. I feel you. Because it's like, you only have this little bit of time. I am not only, I enjoy scheduling dates. Uh, sometimes the sporadic stuff can work for me, but what's starting to change for me is the dinner dates and the eating dates and the smoking hookah like and them? drinking Casamigo okay, dates. It's not hookah. that I don't like them. Okay. It's that, and, and me and my brother were just having this amazing conversation about stuff like this. Uh, it's not creative. And so it, it takes no thought to be like, hey, would you like to go get something to eat? You pick a restaurant, we go, we eat, probably have the same conversation that I had with the person I went on a date a couple of weeks ago or last month or yesterday. And it's, <laughs> uh, it's, I'm starting to really want to have men and even myself be a little bit more creative with how we're spending time together. And for me, dinner ain't cutting it no more. I want to do things that maybe expand our mind a little bit. I learned something from you from this activity and we actually have a good time. It's not like alcohol induced and cancerous uh, utensils. <laughs> going to Northern. even though I love it and I'm not saying I never want to do it again I will say though I'm just looking like okay what else if if I say I don't want to go to eat uh-huh. what what else you got for me yeah I feel you on that mm-hmm. dinner is the easiest it's thing it's no you don't have to there's no thought it's just the like you want to go to some a food? restaurant and, and that's, that's the easy hardest part. yeah you mm-hmm. can literally what is that there used to open be a open table yeah open table but then there's another one where you could put like specifically who you're urban go- daddy urban daddy like I'm going with my side piece or I'm going with the first day or and then it picks it for you you didn't even even pick it so <laughs> it's like I don't know I just like really have been like turning dinner dates down because when you tell somebody like oh I'm not hungry I don't want to go eat they don't know what else to do yeah these niggas be like what I don't know. Or you don't want no hookah? <laughs> what? Or it's Water so late. Like, they don't want to go out until like 9, 10 o'clock. So then the creative stuff is over. The like, creative stuff is over. Nigga, and wake up. Yeah. Stop going out every night, staying out, going to Chic and being at the after hours. Like, yeah. wake up. You and have I don't know about you, Kiki, but it was funny. Like, after my, like, I am, get, I be tired by 10. I be tired. In Costa Rica, even though there was a time change, there would be moments when my friends would come into the room and be like, you're really the bed I'm in the bed like I know how I have to prepare to be ready for the day just to have a good attitude yeah I, like the the wee hours of the night still be happening every now and again but I it just I be tired bro <sighs> yeah it is tiresome like the other night whatever night the fight was I think that was Saturday I was supposed to go out with some girlfriends they are blowing my phone up and um Tiffany was at my house. I fell asleep on her and she saw that my phone was ringing. So it's a group chat that I have um, with some of my friends and it's called Miss New Booties. So, oh, because y'all all got that, new booties. That's no, so that's cute. No, that's not why. Oh. <laughs> It's an, it's an inside joke, but they saw that ringing, but they was like, well, I don't know who Miss New Booties is because it doesn't show the name because it was a group <laughs> FaceTime. So they're like, is this a bitch that she fucking with? Like, who is this? I don't know if we should answer. So they didn't answer the phone. But anyway, I missed everything. They called me at 10 15. What were you doing? 10, I was asleep. Oh. I was asleep. I was like, y'all can I? The sun went down. It's dark in here. We had an intermission. We had gone to lunch earlier in the day. And then there was that gap. And it's like, if I'm not back moving, 
morning at seven o'clock. Y'all left me in here. I'm watching Made on Netflix. The shit is good. I'm going to bed. Look, when I was fully dressed. Mandy came out here a few weeks ago, not mm-hmm. for the the live show thing with iHeart, but before that, and we had a plan. We was going to trapeze, bitch. We was going. Like oh. Mandy and I went to the sex club in New York, and it was amazing. We had an amazing experience, and we were going to try to re redo it in at trapeze in Atlanta. We're okay. ready. We go to the Beltline. We try to sneak into the wine festival. It didn't work out. Um, <laughs> and then we end up going to Bar Vegan and we get drunk and when we go to escape rooms and we're drinking more. And I'm like, at this point, I'm like, we started too early. Yeah. I didn't make it to trapeze. I said I was going home to take a nap. I knew good and goddamn well I was going home to get in the bed and go to sleep. They were blowing my phone up. They're like, we're headed to trapeze. Okay, we are you on your way? Okay, park here. It's a wrap. If I don't respond, it is intentionally. <laughs> It is like, I might actually be drooling right now. That does happen. They were like, okay, get your nap in. We're leaving at 11. Who I is? can't do a nap. Who's leaving I- at 11? <laughs> no, that's what I would like. No, who is leaving at 11? Honestly, it's, after we had that brunch and then we went to Visions, I was so glad we went out at 7.30. Now, you were still done by then, but was that was done. different. We started early and we were drinking, drinking early. But I was so glad the party started at 7. I looked like and- the black Harley Quinn at the end of that night. <laughs> Uh, the bl- uh, there was makeup running down my eyes and my, for some reason my hair was in a high ponytail. I don't know why that happened because it was not like that when I yeah. saw you. But yeah, like I was home by midnight and that's how I like it. I am Cinderella, bitch. Get me home before the clock strikes 12. I'm tired. Yeah, or I am turning into an ogre. Or I'm just going to go to sleep wherever we're at. So if you don't want to be embarrassed by me sleeping in the corner at the club, take my ass home. I get okay? an attitude and start demanding unrealistic things. But you know what? I will say, when I was in Houston, it was um, Nigerian Independence Weekend, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, this guy took me to this club and it was an African club. We walked in there. It was probably like one or two in the morning. We didn't leave till late. It was probably like four, three or four. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, I'm so tired. I made it through that night because it was so much fun. Now that night, I don't know how I made it because I had been up all day. I took a flight. We went to a couple of other places first. I I don't know how you be. Do you do drugs? No. Okay. Mm-mm. Cause I don't know how you do it, bitch. I don't know. And I don't, don't let it be a day where I'm flying. And flight sleep don't count to me. I'd be like, it didn't count. That wasn't real sleep. My cause the crook in my neck. I think it's because I like that man. So um, I was just up and I was enjoying I get it. myself. Sometimes when it be a man, you be like, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then when I went to dinner and stuff, it was chill. I had time to relax. And then I didn't start too heavy. I didn't have shots until I got to him. Like I went to dinner with and some you girlfriends. you ate sufficiently. Yeah, had a I ate a real and- meal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, nice. yeah, they had cookies at the next club, which I thought was strange. That's cute. They just passed out cookies? Yeah, Nigerian cookies? No, they were chocolate chip cookies. I don't know if it was somebody who was there. I don't know what was going on, but... That's what it was. By the way, next year, you need to go out there for that Independence Weekend. That shit was lit. Where? We had, to Houston. They just have all these parties. It was so much fun. Really? I felt like I was in Africa. I mean, I've never been to Africa. I'm hoping to go soon. But, um, yeah, it was a good time. And it was the homecomings and another, like, rival game. So it was just so many people in town. That sounds like an amazing man-infested weekend. There were so many Smell men. Good. So many I just see many Gucci men. slides everywhere. Well, not the slides, but um, they had that shit on now. That was looking good. I the men were out. Were. When I got on the plane, first of all, back up at the airport, I said, it's a lot of men. Then they get off on the train where I'm getting off. I said, huh, I wonder where they're going. I'm paying attention. Um, they're all waiting at the thing. There were so many attractive men. Oh, I love on attractive the flight men. With me. And I was like, Did you talk to anybody this, on the flight? Not on the flight because they were sitting too far behind me, but. Could you imagine I sending somebody a drink on the flight and you're like, excuse me, ma'am, will you go send 32E? Well, he ain't that far back. <laughs> Can you go send 5F uh, uh, cocktail? Um, then, that um, would be funny. But speaking of cookies, this is this just popped up in my mind. Y'all know random stuff be popping in my mind. Some of the listeners at the retreat were like, Medina, you really just be saying stuff sometimes and, and it don't have nothing to do with, this don't have nothing to do with nothing. But you were speaking <laughs> about cookies and this just made me think about waffle struples. Have you ever had a waffle struple? I think so. They're like room temperature. It's like a waffle with but caramel kind of like in the middle. Cookie-ish. And it's like a cookie, but yeah. it's soft. And you just break it. One time I had it on a Delta flight. And I don't know why. I see them at Whole Foods all the time. I never see them at Whole Foods, but I saw them. I never knew where to buy them from. They have mm-hmm. them at the Target at the checkout. They are so good. I just yeah. didn't know if you had had one. Mm-hmm. If y'all ain't never had I've a waffle strip, we'll get one. I've seen it with the caramel on the inside and the chocolate. I don't ever get the chocolate. I like the caramel. The caramel is phenomenally good. I mean, mm-hmm. breathtakingly good. Like. Well, know about all that but okay um, <laughs> um you know okay, try well, it um okay. next question oh go ahead can you be too busy to date 
You can be too busy. You don't think that's an assholeish thing to say? Like, what if someone was like, I'm too just, busy to date? I feel like it, dating is not their priority. And that's why they're too busy. And they know that they're not going to give you enough attention. It's like, maybe I can squeeze you in, but I might cancel. Mm -hmm. And because I'm not trying to be an asshole, it's like, let me just tell you I'm too busy. Because you're not going to be a priority. And I'd rather you tell me that shit than constantly canceling and rescheduling. Oh, I forgot. Something came up. I'm so busy with work. Like, from the jump, I'm sorry. It was cool meeting you, but I'm really too busy. You're not a priority. That's what what that means. I wow. think it's a nicer way of saying you just can't be a priority to me right now. That's a good way to, to put it. You you didn't think so? No. I, I, <laughs> I mean, I get it. I get if you really don't have time, but I feel like you should make time. Why? Like, what, like what, what, what do you want to have somebody in your life, nigga? Maybe right I now I would be know. offended by it. If someone... I can tell. Is, but but this, you kind of sound like the niggas I be talking about. Just because I like you doesn't mean... That, or just because you like me doesn't mean I have to like you back. Just because you want to date don't mean they got to want to date too. It doesn't mean that you have to want to date too. But it does mean when you circle back around and I'm not available anymore, why the fuck did you just do this? Like, Well, because now they got time. They was just shooting their shot. So they're not they're supposed to keep their mouth closed. What if you were single single and interested and available? Available. All I'm saying is <laughs> I don't really think being too busy is an excuse. Like, yeah, if you don't want to make me a priority, that's one thing. But that's totally different from being too busy. That's too not busy. It's for the same love? thing because your priority is not love. So all this other stuff you have to do is more important than this. So I'm too busy with this to be worried about a love life. I mean, I I do get it. I'm just saying, if I was like in the situation, I would really be like, "Are you sure? Are you serious?" <laughs> like, I could see you saying that to I somebody. Would say it, have you said it? I've never said. Oh. I've never had anyone tell me that I'm not a priority. Now their actions showed it, but I've mm -hmm. never had anyone say like I'm actually too busy today. And maybe mm -hmm. they should have said it. Um, but even though when I have been busy, I I make time for what I want to make time for, which is, you know... Yeah, that's what you want to make time right. for, is dating. True. Now, okay, so let's say that you go do go on a date with somebody and you like him, you're having a good time on the first date. How quickly do you know if you want a second date? Oh, I know on that first date. Same. I know, and it's almost like, you know how like music people say that, I think it takes like five seconds to know if you love a song. It's like five or two. It's a very short amount of time to know if you I like know, a song or know? not. <laughs> do y'all know? It's like there's What's like a time second? frame that people play a five song seconds. whether you know the words or not. It's... Ten. Okay. Yeah, 10 seconds to know that you like the song. Like, this is going to be a hit. And you you know that with a lot of Beyonce songs. You start The second you start to play, you don't even know the words yet. You, you like, just hear the horns blaring. Or the, and you love do, the do, song. Do, do, do. Yeah, or oh. a Drake song. And it's like, oh, yeah. you know you love the song. And so with... Instant. Instant. And with people, I feel that. And so I will know if I want to go on a second date with you on that day when we start talking and it's vibing. Even if it starts off a little maybe awkward. Yeah. I will know. I give them a little time. For, we got to work out the awkwardness. Yeah. So that's fine. I won't. Even sometimes in like friend situations, this recently just happened. I was at the nail salon and I was getting my eyebrows done. And um, when I was waiting in line to pay, this lady was like, did you just get your eyebrows done? I was like, yeah. Oh, yeah, you told us it. Oh, did I tell you that? Yeah. And I instantly knew like, oh my God, I, I want to be, be your friend. friend. Like, I, I can tell pretty quickly if I don't want to fuck with you or if I do. Yeah. Every now and again, some people slide in between and you do end up being like, at first I didn't fuck with you yeah. and now I do. But for the most part, I'll be right. I have a friend like that, like um, Drea, when we first met and we were hanging out and we were talking, we were talking forever and we just had so much fun and we're still friends. Mm -hmm. um, that was like an instant friend. And then there's other people that I was like, I don't really like you at first. <laughs> um, and I feel like that's a lot of people from like high school, for example. Mm -hmm. Like you, you know, I don't ever like your ass, but we ended up being friends. Like my friend Candace, we didn't like each other at mm -hmm. first, but we're friends now. So it's funny how that happens, but I know what you mean about the instant connection. Now on the dates, mm -hmm. I have found that usually we already setting up the second date before the dessert comes. Oh, how often do you have an instant co romantic connection? It's not often. It used to be often for me, but now it's not. Good. Uh, yeah, it is not. <laughs> Uh, it's not that often. People be boring. Like I said, that they dinner are. shit, I'm, at this point, I'd be like, uh. I feel like when you, do, because you're not having as many, maybe you're being more picky and you're realizing more of what you really, really like and what's important to you. Absolutely. Yeah. That's, that's absolutely it. And, mm -hmm. and niggas be boring. They really are. It's like, <sighs> what experiences have you had in your life outside of work? Unless your work is just like really, really exciting, but still, we can only talk about that. But right. so much. Unless you like, do if you, you have swim with else? sharks, like, 
right, cool. Let's talk about it but all day. But how long are we going to talk about swimming with sharks? I think what I is there talk to about say? it all day. But like... Don't talk to me about that shit. <laughs> Please. I would be like, you know what? I don't even want this juicy steak. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. Um, How long does it take you to get ready for a date? Typically. Ooh. If it's a dinner date or something where you have to get dressed up or you feel like you should get dressed up. Um... I, it takes me about an hour and a half, I okay. think. And it's because I incorporate the me lollygagging and me now I'm playing on Instagram and me <laughs> now I'm talking what in the mirror to myself. What are you playing on Instagram myself. doing? Just now like with the playing talking. with the filters and now I'm like, oh, I look cute. And now when I, I put, I allot for all of that time. It doesn't actually take me the the physical part of getting ready. It doesn't uh-huh. take me that long. Like I do my makeup. My face probably takes about 30 minutes. Mm-hmm. And then hair, depending on how it is, if it's straight and out and I have to curl it, that's probably like 20-ish minutes. Mm-hmm. But like I give myself an hour and a half. So if we are going to meet for dinner at 7.30, I will begin the process at 4.30 if I can. Wait a minute. That was 4.30 to 7.30? Is that an hour and a half? That's three hours. <laughs> okay. Jesus be a calculator. Okay. 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 <laughs> Wait. Okay. 4.30? You probably really do okay. start Maybe ready I at started at 5. Because I laughed take in the amount of time. Two and a half hours. I got the music on, like, and then it's what like... What are you doing, dancing? I just move slow. I move fucking slow, bro. Like, even when we come to the studio, on our recording days, I have to start prepping to get here at least by 1.30 if we're recording at 4. Because I taking into consideration the traffic. I'm taking into consideration, like, I know I'm a lollygag if I'm going to get food. Like, and you it's know, I hate second. being late. Like, yeah. I really don't play with that. I don't like the late stuff. So, okay, maybe, maybe I start getting ready a little bit you know, more than an hour and a half before, but it takes <laughs> me an hour and a half to actually get ready. The rest of the time is just lollygagging. So I asked that because I forgot that I had um, chipped my toenail polish mm-hmm. before this date. It was a first date that I had last week. You stubbed your toe? Yeah. Oh. Well, I tripped over something oh. and it was, but you know, fun times, doesn't matter. Yeah. Um. Anyway, so I had to go get my nail polish fixed. So I was like, well, I may as well get a pedicure. So... It was just taking a long time and I didn't realize it. The guy told me to be ready at 8.30 and don't be late. And I've been trying. And your ass was late. I was not late. Oh. I was ready to go at 8.27. Thank you very much. You would be proud. 8.27? He was picking me up. So oh, be ready I was to like, go at 8.30. Eat. Okay. Yeah. So I'm at the nail shop at 7.40. So I'm like nervous. So I'm like, okay, what am I going to wear? This is what takes me the longest getting ready. I do do a little lollygagging, but it's like, well, not really lollygagging. I get nervous. And so then I'm FaceTiming everybody, asking for advice, trying to decide, do I have a shot? Do I have a glass of wine? What am I going to do? What am I going to wear? What are you nervous about? I just get nervous. Okay. Like, am I going to have word vomit? Is this going to be a good time? I don't Really so know. this must have been a new boo. This is a total. This was a first date. Uh, I just met this guy the day before, and then he was like, "I'm taking you out tomorrow. I'm wow. not wasting time." I am shocked that you let him pick you up. I get a little bit like I don't know, not scared like you're gonna kidnap me, and that's why I don't want you to pick me up. I, sometimes I feel like it exhausts the conversation when they pick you up. I actually enjoyed it. it. That does happen sometimes, but when I met him the day before, he's a friend of a friend. Okay. So we had a good time safe. talking already, and it's like my friend is vouching for him. I trust him. I've seen this other guy around. I just didn't know him. Okay. So I felt comfortable. So he comes to pick me up. Driver. Nice experience. Oh, he yeah. had a driver. Mm-hmm. That's dope. Mm-hmm. So we have the day and um, we talked in the car and everything, but I was, that's beside the point. I'll tell you that another time. The point was I got ready in 40 minutes and I never thought I would see the day that I did because I ran out of that nail shop. Luckily, I was just a couple minutes from the house. I went inside. I was like, I have a dress picked out in my mind. Did you already have makeup on? No, I had to do my makeup. Oh, see, that's something I can't rush. I take My so hair long. was done. But that makes it makeup, easier too. That makes it easier. I was like, all I can do is try and fix these edges and we're just going to see what it's going to give. But then I was like, I really want to look cute because when he met me the day before, I had on like a hoodie. My hair was all over my head. Like I was not planning to go out. Me and my friend Drea were out and we had just decided to go to lunch after running errands and we ended up at Siva's. And it's like, we are looking crazy. We don't have on no makeup, no nothing. We have on sneakers. I'm not looking like, you know, I can't. 
So I was like, well, I really want to make a good impression today. Like, I clean up well. So. I love when someone has never seen you clean up and then they see you clean up and they're like, oh. Because I don't be cleaning up that often. But when I do <laughs> clean up, a bitch be turning heads. Uh, this is funny. There was a guy that I went on a date with and he asked me why my nails weren't done. And I thought that was really funny because, <laughs> like, me a couple years ago, I would have really been like, oh, my gosh, I need to go get my nails done. And I don't really wear a lot of fake nails. Like, there sometimes I'll do it because it is cute and it's sexy. And he was looking at me like I needed to go get my nails done. So and what did you say? I told him, I was like, it's, it's really interesting that that's what you're worried about. I was like, so let me just give you the rundown. I was like, I don't wear fake nails a lot because like I want to make sure I like my hands and my fingernails and like myself. So like sometimes I'll just take a break on the fake stuff for a minute and then I'll jump back on and do it again. But every now and again, I feel like I just want to look at me. You know what I mean? Like and see and make sure I like it. And he mm -hmm. was really looking at me like, you want me to send you some money to get your nails done? <laughs> I, was like, I was like, nigga, no. Yeah, because I hear you, like, but I, I yeah, don't be feeling like that. Like, but I, I get it. Yeah, I was like, you want to fucking I would be like, offended if somebody says that to me. Said, why aren't your nails done? Yeah, it's like, well, obviously I was fine with my nails not being done. I have a manicure. I, I just don't have... I wasn't nails. offended because I, I, it Why didn't would you ask me, me that? Why don't I have my nails done? I think done? he thought, especially being in Atlanta, that I needed, because I don't have fake nails, that, that I needed need money. money to get the nails done. When but then that would offend me too, because nigga, did you just call me broke? I think that he was trying like, boy, to. fuck you. But not because of anything else other than my nails you not being just done. just the nails, And but so that's then what that in turn me. made me look at him like, you're not for me. I'm, I'm really I'm paying attention good. to niggas. Like, Ex my nails? No like, new day these are you. my nails. Like, aren't you glad that I got them? Like, it was just, it was, I've been having some really eye opening experiences with men. That's good. And the way that they communicate or not. <laughs> yeah, because uh, <laughs> that don't always be happening. Um, okay, so when do you start cutting people off if you like someone? Oh, like if I'm dating, you've been dating, you've been uh -huh. single, and now it's like you found that one. You have like five one. guys that you're dating, but you really like, you got your favorite now. When do you start cutting the other ones off? You know, At Kiki. the wedding. <laughs> <laughs> or do you always keep one in the back pocket? Because okay. look, the way that these niggas is behaving, I'm starting to look at, it behooves you not to be loyal. <laughs> And I know that that is horrible to say, but niggas don't be being loyal. But okay, to answer the question, I will say that I it I I, I give myself a three to four month mark, and and I don't feel like I need to let you know that I'm still dealing with somebody, and that's just what I give myself, and I and I give the other person that too. A guy that I recently met, I told him like. I, you know, he's expressing he really liked me and we've been spending a lot of time together, but I don't think we need to rush into cutting off whoever you've been dealing with because it's still so new. And I don't want you to feel obligated to do it because I'm not going to do it. And especially when somebody, some of the people that you're dealing with are, you know, financially doing things for you, we not quickly cutting that off. So <laughs> I'm giving it a three to four month time span of when, if we're really thinking about getting serious, then we cut, then we are like, okay, Okay. Because you also, if it's, if you were dealing with somebody else other than me and maybe y'all were spending a lot of time together, let's say Lieutenant Bay, for instance, I'm not just going to cut that nigga off. It's going to take a, a time, almost like a breakup period. You know what I mean? I, even if I do like somebody, I feel like I would owe it to him um, to let him know and give us time to really like work wait, through wait. ending this. You had me, then you lost me. You owe him what? I feel like uh, not just him, me too. I like hanging out you, with that nigga. You owe yourself, but I don't feel like you owe him shit. If you still want to, that's fine. If you're not all the way over and you're still trying to figure out all that's fine. But girl, fuck him. Girl, fuck him. But I do still feel like I would owe him like just to a three month mark. Like, hey, we about to be done. So let's get these last little things in. <laughs> <laughs> like I met somebody oh that I God. like and here's how it's going like so I I'm gonna start cutting people off in three months <laughs> is that weird yes <laughs> when do you start why am I cutting them off <laughs> listen if I still like all of them right I'm gonna but, keep but all of them but you are dating one and you really do like him I understand what you're saying it's gonna now, get honestly, weird to start ducking and dodging calls and he's looking at you like why don't you pick it up or well are we together where's my ring but really I don't usually date a lot of people at once anyway so it's never really that big of a deal even Somebody if it's not fall, a lot just one other well I'm not gonna cut him off if I still like him okay and are you gonna communicate that with the new guy like hey listen I'm not cutting nobody off if he asks me about what I'm doing dating wise when we have those conversations I'll be honest I'm dating somebody else and I like him but I like you too 
But what if he's like, I do want to take this to the next level. And what I, level? Of I want us to be in a relationship. Like an exclusive relationship? An exclusive relationship. Then I can let the other man know, sorry, you snooze, you lost. Okay. If I want to be with that person. I okay. guess it depends on if it's my favorite nigga asking me or it's my second favorite nigga asking me. The I mean, favorite one, I'm going to be ready to cut it off. If he's the second favorite, I would be like, let me think about this. And then I got to think about it. I don't know. But usually, like, I really just really like one person. So it wouldn't be hard for me to cut off the others. But mm -hmm. mm -mm. and they're not I getting no three it. months. They're not. <clears throat> I say three months because and I said three months in my head, but I wouldn't tell them you got 90 days. I, no, no, no. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm, it's <laughs> Let me clear this up. OK, I give it three months for realistically and honestly for people to be done fucking with whatever you were doing. After that three months, if something comes up like you're still dealing with somebody else and we said we were going to be exclusive and that three month mark has passed. I, now I'm looking at you like you a cheater and a liar. I you give a like grace. Facts. I saw him post something like that the other day. <laughs> Cheating in the first 90 days don't count. It doesn't. Because I still get it. Shit out. We are still figuring the shit out. And I totally understand he that, that area. About you. Okay. He probably did. Is that what you mean? That's like, what I mean. you're still trying to figure it out. Like, yeah. do I stay or do I go? Mm -hmm. And okay. after that, Mark, then it's like, bitch... I mean, we almost six months in now. What you doing? Like, you know, or you shouldn't you... have even said shit. You should have just kept on being right. happy. <laughs> like, just like with your lying ass. Um, um, do you always have someone in your back pocket, even when no. you do get serious with someone? No. Okay, so you really do cut everybody off. Yeah, or it's a lot. It takes a lot for me to like you. Mm -hmm. So I don't be having that many niggas. I tell her all the time. She's always trying to do these double dates and group dates, and I'm like, bitch, are you bringing somebody for me? I hate to be that friend, <laughs> but do you have a friend? Because I don't even like any of these people. Well, it doesn't have to be serious. I don't like any of them. <laughs> what part of that don't you understand? I do not want to be standing next to a person who I know, who I also do not want anything with no ill no so when i like somebody um i'll bring them around but yeah mm -mm. well i won't hold my breath um <laughs> do women overthink when it comes to dating oh hell yeah i overthink everything mm. i was supposed to do something i was supposed to have this conversation when i was in texas the other week and i didn't have it because i overthought the what whole conversation? thing. I'll tell you later. Mm -hmm. But I was supposed to have this conversation. I never had the conversation because I was overthinking everything. And then even with the guy that I just met, like, what, last week? Um, I was overthinking a bunch of stuff. And I was like, why do I do that? It's the Virgo in me. And I'm just going to keep praying about it. Oh, well, I don't know if it's just the Virgo in you because I, I do that too. Like, that's a mm -hmm. Libra trait too. Like, just overthinking the whole thing. And then, you know, overthought it so much to where, like, now you are like, yeah. Then it's like, well, wait, what actually happened? And then you don't, yeah, you don't know what's true and what's not. And you're like, like yeah. did he already say, did I already talk he to says, him? what happened? And he did shut it down. Okay, no, I'm not going. I don't know. Like, and then it's like, <laughs> did I create this? Is this a fantasy? And the pattern app is always calling me delusional. So then it's like, I have to like, just reevaluate. I'm re still scared to download that. For the, I it's think called. it's good. I think you should. Yeah, maybe, maybe I will, maybe I won't. But Probably not. I think, that, <laughs> I think that women do overthink dating, but I don't always think it's a bad thing. Like I had this conversation um, on a bonus episode. I'll share a little snippet of it. But sometimes I think over when you're when you think about dating someone who might possibly be like, I'm gonna take it there, but like your your spouse or like your life partner or the father or mother of your children. I do think you should overthink it a smidge. It's it's one step closer to maybe falling in love with somebody, even mm -hmm. though you're, it's just a, a date. You don't know where that date's going to lead. So I, mean, you don't, I think you should definitely think things through. But as I say no to the overthinking because the overthinking, when you're overdoing it, that's when you start doing shit that you don't need to right. do. Right. That's it's what I'm saying. Let's have it with balance. Just like, think things through. Give it some true consideration. I don't think men think about it enough. I think niggas. No, I don't. Uh, I think niggas just be like, next, next, <laughs> next, next, next. Like, they not think about nothing. Like, you just be, sometimes you sit down and talking you're like so you're dating to fuck and we're in our 30s like I just do think that some thought should be put into this my nigga I think that a lot of them do I think like what you're talking about but lately I've been meaning more who are like I would say I guess dating with a purpose mm -hmm. and they'll be more honest about it well I hope they be being honest I mean I don't know these niggas last three weeks so y'all don't hold me to nothing this three is all weeks. fresh One um, day period. but some of them it just seems like in the conversation the questions that they're asking you the stuff that they're trying to do 
it seems like they're thinking more long term, not uh-huh. just fucking you. I was. I had a conversation. But with I do want them to fuck me too. The other day, and it felt it was very sexy. Life insurance. Life insurance. Like, yeah, he was asking me like, "Do you have a life insurance policy?" And uh-huh. like, let's talk about that. And like, what you now? See, that would have me overthinking. Like, he was trying to kill me. Well, and see, get added he said on. that a lot of black people think like that. He was like, a lot of that's why a lot of us don't be having it because you're instantly like thinking about death, but you do need to be prepared for it. It was a very attractive conversation, like making sure things if are. If you liked it, okay. I loved it. But I wanted to ask you this a question just popped in my head. Fuck, fuck, fuck. Don't you hate me you have a good question and then it leaves? Look at life me. insurance. Blink twice because you had blinked. Life insurance. No. It wasn't life insurance. A lot of black people think like this. No. Was he black when he said that? He was, As a matter of, oh, he was okay. black when he said it. All right. <laughs> was he black when he said it? Like he could blink and become <laughs> something else. <laughs> <laughs> was black. I mean, was he black, the yeah. one who said you think it? I would be okay with that, a white person being like, black people think? I well, would girl, be upset. I don't know. I have to ask these questions. He really might have be been. Like, Sir. He might have been other. You didn't know what he was. I, was I mean, gonna, I don't know. This is what I was going to ask you. Okay. Would you be offended? Yes. Let me not say Y'all already know. Should be pissing me off. Way. If, if if a guy stresses that you are not his girlfriend, like something happens and it's like, you're not my girlfriend. Boy, fuck you. <laughs> because here's where men get... And that's why I'm a fuck your brother. I don't your like Your brother? That. Jesus Christ. I wouldn't really do that, but that's how I would be feeling. Like, I know you're not I my boyfriend. I might fuck your line, brother. I done did that a couple of times. I'll definitely fuck your frat brother. Yeah, like, cause y'all ain't because y'all, y'all really don't have... even cover each other like that. Y'all really don't. Because some of y'all... Whew. And y'all paid to be a part of this, so whatever. Anyway. Okay. okay. What was the question? Would you take it offensively oh, if offended? he's like, you're not my girlfriend? Yeah, I don't like when people do that. I know that. I why know are you that, saying that and why to are you me? saying that? And also, like, why are the same person that said that was the same person that was like, I just want to know you're like, you're invested in this too. But why? I'm not your girlfriend. I have noticed that the only men who have ever said some shit like that to me were men who were trying to make me act like I was their girlfriend, but they wanted me to be sure to know that they weren't my boyfriend. So, like, I need to be attached to them, can't fuck with nobody else, but they can do whatever the fuck they want to do. And boy, fuck you. Boy, fuck you. Hmm. I like saying that. I love it. I want to say it to someone live. I want to like, get it on some mugs. Boy, fuck you. Yes, boy, fuck you on mugs, on a doormat. That's actually real cute. Yeah. I'm aggressive, that. but it's very cute. You know, whatever. I'm <laughs> sure many of us can relate. Yeah. Um, I won't be making girl fuck you ones, but I'm sure y'all y'all feel that too sometimes. Right. Uh, okay. You guys, we are going to move on to Indecisive Diane. And when we come back, we have some advice and some cocktails for that ass. Would you stop thinking about what everyone wants? Stop thinking about what I want, what he wants, what your parents want. What do you want? What do you want? It's not that simple. What do you want? What do you want? Hey ladies, it's me, Indecisive Diane. You know what season it is? Cuffing season, if you're already in a relationship, go on a trip with your bae. Get flued out in a relationship way, not the prostitution way, you know what I mean. But go on a trip together. Pick somewhere on a map, go somewhere tropical, have fun. Don't pay for it. Make sure he does. Bye. Okay, and we are back from Indecisive Diane, and it's time for the advice. Remember, we have two separate emails, so if you would like some advice from us, please email it to us at askcocktails at gmail.com. Okay, so this one is a possible serial love bomber. Um, She says, hey, ladies, love the show. I subscribed to Patreon a little while ago because y'all are the besties. Anywho, I am currently listening to the Love Bomber episode. I'm ready to tell my story. My apologies if this is a little long. I can definitely send the cocktail too, but how do I get rid of him? Okay, make sure you go ahead and send that cocktail. Um, I'm about to get married next year and I just don't want him popping up anymore. It sounds like a Lifetime movie. Okay. She says, rewind. I grew up with this guy. We can call him Alonzo. My aunt was his neighbor and we would hang out as kids. We actually went to middle school together. Alonzo was my first kiss in seventh grade. For perspective, he is now 27 and I am 26. Yeah, I know. We're young. Since we were adolescents, he has always been around. There's always been so much tension between us. We would always flirt, FaceTime, and sext until one day he showed up in my city where I went to college. It was my 
birthday. And I was at the club with some friends and my boyfriend at the time. My boyfriend made me mad at the club. He started a fight with a nigga. I was so embarrassed. So Alonzo showing at the club was perfect. Let me tell you something. Alonzo always seems to show up at the perfect time. Mm. He comes to pick me up and we end up in a bedroom at one of his homeboy's house. I know. She put that in parentheses. <laughs> that night was a whole cocktail in itself. Whew. We fucked all night long. He held me all night. He was telling me how he always loved me, etc. All that bill. Y'all, next day, he ghosted. Turns out that nigga was in jail. We were often... <laughs> Is this the nigga that... Is it? <laughs> Is this? A, yeah. Oh, because I'm like a long. Mm, I don't know. Okay. Um, we were off and on for years. A couple of years ago, he asked me to come to a city. I was ready. I was single and ready to ride that dick again. The day before, he hits me up with some BS. He said in a nutshell that he has a situation going on that he's not trying to disrespect and proceeds to confess his love for me. What the fuck? How are you not trying to disrespect it, but you telling me you love me? Okay, whatever. Um, I was hella confused because he invited me to a city. Anyway, flash forward. It's like he conveniently always shows up. A year ago, he starts talking to me consistently again. We were on FaceTime one day and things got a little heated. We were both in a relationship. He watched me play with my pussy and I watched him jack off. He's begging me to come to a city, offering to fly me out, even though he's three hours away, offering to give me gas money and take me out. He will tell me that he really wants to be with me. Then he'll go ghost. Recently, he just sexted me. He texted, I'm sorry. I was thinking about sexting. He just texted her and asked if she was happy. Like, why? He FaceTimed me a week later and told me he had broken up with his girlfriend. He disguised his intentions of wanting me to come to him by saying, I want to book a photo shoot. I'm a photographer. He then says, he? she's a photographer. Oh. So he was like, I want to book a photo shoot to because he really wanted to see her. Okay. Um, he then says, that's the only way I'll get you down here, it seems. Then there was another love confession. I'm always looking for new faces to shoot. But him, should I go down there, take his pictures, and just officially end it? How do I get rid of him? I feel like it's hard because we've known each other for so long. But he he is not the one for me. Let me know what y'all think. Thank you for reading, ladies. Best thinking about him and confused. Okay. I think that this is one of those situations. I don't, I can't really, I'm a little confused, like, if he's a love bomber because he keeps, like, like, ghosting. It's not, like, long enough for him to be, like, love bombing you yet. And he's not really doing anything that's that sweet. A lot of the time, love <laughs> bombers do, like, extremely sweet, thoughtful things that make you think that they love you and they wait for the confusion. Mm -hmm. So... I also think that you saying, like, should I go down there, do his pictures for him, and then end it? No, you're still doing him a favor in doing that, bro. I think that you're kind of being used a little bit, and you're allowing it, and you need to stop. And to stop this, you need to block him from everything. No, there's no more contact. And that's just that. Everything doesn't always deserve a conversation and a discussion. Somebody's disrespecting your time, your feelings, uh, and that's not fair to you. I don't know you, but you you seem like an honest person to write this five-page letter. <laughs> and I think that this is one of those things where you just cut that shit off. Like, you don't deserve, I don't respect you enough to even tell you why I'm not talking to you no more. I'm blocking you on everything. I might change my number. If I see you, I don't know you. And that's that on that. I don't know if I would do all of that, but I would definitely block his number. And I would even say beforehand, since y'all have been friends since the seventh grade, hey, you know what? You always pop up and you come at me with this stuff and I just can't deal with it and you won't stop. So respectfully, I'm going to have to block you. Um, here's a photographer friend uh, that you can book in your own city. Good riddance and God bless. And that's it. Like, move on. I don't think that you should do the photo shoot. At Absolutely all. not. And then you got to travel for it. Hell no. Nah. At all. Um, like, stop. And you, you said you know he's not the one. So just end it. You probably like the attention and that's probably what's keeping the pool there. But let that shit go. It's not serving you at any all. purpose. And when something is not serving you any purpose, it's time to let it go, sis. Look yourself in the mirror how Issa Rae be doing it and insecure and have a real argument with yourself and do what you need to do to cut that nigga off. But don't give him no gifts in the midst of cutting him off and giving him a photo shoot. And don't Why do you think she was giving it to him? He said he wanted to book it, like he was going to pay no, for I it. No, I get that. But oh. still, don't give him your services. Find somebody else. And don't give him a suggestion. Let him do the work and find it. Bye. When niggas be done, they be done. They don't even give us no explanation most of the time. Them niggas be done. Be done. 
Okay, well, do you have another advice? Yes. It says, hey, ladies. So I'm a busy single mom that doesn't have much time or the want to date right now. Okay. I do, however, have needs that need to be fulfilled on the regular. Here's the issue. I want my pussy ate. Oh. Not by a man either. I need a good, solid-ass female friend that comes over when I'm free that'll sit with me, watch movies, eat junk food, and occasionally my pussy. (laughs) Not strings attached. uh, No strings attached. How do I go about finding a freaky friend? Love you guys. I'm going to let Kiki handle this one. <laughs> Why me? Because you you got freaky friends. Like, okay. I would say um, join a gym. <laughs> join a gym. Make friends with the girls in your workout classes. Um, I would also say uh, Tinder is an excellent <laughs> option. And just go on there, switch your profile to women, and go through the women. Um, you can also go to the club. I haven't ever done the club thing uh, where you're out at the club and then you meet these friends who be out at the club. I mean, it's it's a little bit easier to flirt with somebody there and get drunk and kiss your homegirl um, and then see what happens later. But I would say, yeah, get one of the apps. It's lots of girls who feel the same way that you do. People are shy about it. It's easier to text. You can filter through the pictures so that you can figure out what is this bitch giving? Or just ask your freaky friend if you have one. Um, Everybody's not so lucky. But like, I know I have a homegirl and she has lots of freaky ass friends. So I've never asked her for one. But if I wanted one, she would have somebody for me. Wow. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So make some new friends. You need to find some freaky ass friends. That's what you have to do. Here Good luck go. to you. Send us a cocktail when you find your homegirl to come over on Netflix and yeah. eat cookies and, and yo cookie you might find them in the cocktails podcast instagram comments page because the oh, bitches yeah. be freaky in the comments we'll post some stuff about girls like and girls and see see who putting little emojis right in the comments. and then just dm them <laughs> sliding their dms uh all right y'all it is time for our favorite part of the show the cocktails yes uh-huh 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 What do I want to tell? Oh. Well, you go first so I can think of which one I want to tell. You got a note here that says, come in with my clothes on. I know, but I don't know if I want to tell that one. Oh. I was trying to think if I want to go in chronological okay. order or not. You go first. Okay. I, <laughs> I, I thought I was going to share the one with the nigga that had his face down, ass up, but I'm going to read this one. Um, okay. I might share the next one when our, for the next episode. Okay. This summer, my face down, ass up. Right. That's, that's a boosie lyric. It's a lot of people's lyrics. Okay. Um, this summer, I ta- oh, the I forgot to put the subject line, but it says something about Costa Rica, and I thought it was so fitting. The alignment. It okay. Did. This summer, I tagged on to an impromptu group trip to Costa Rica with one of my gay guy friends. One day while while out at lunch, we were casually talking about how I had never had sex with someone who wasn't black. And the people proceeded to tell me I was missing out. Hmm. I mean, it is an, it's an experience. Okay. I was about to say an experiment. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I got kind of slow. Um, not necessarily on purpose. I just mostly date black men. And my type is typically tall, dark, and African. But little Amen. did I know, the universe was about to show me a little sun sun, and the Latino poppy would spice my life up as soon as later that night. After a night of sipping and chilling in our Airbnb hot tub, my friend and I wanted to explore nightlife in the coastal town we stayed in. So we got cute and headed out. We were on the Caribbean side of Costa Rica, so we wound up at a vibey outdoor reggae party while wine, while a uh, whining and <laughs> minding my business and having a good old time. I didn't peep this strong, sexy Latino guy with a slick beard, um, man, uh, man bun, and surfer vibe was checking me out. Oh, she didn't peep it. Okay, I get it. After dancing up an appetite, my friend and I walked out to the nearby food truck and waited. And while waiting to order, Sexy Surfer Bay came up to us smiling and trying his best English to get a conversation going. He pulled out his phone and we exchanged pleasantries via Google Translate. (laughs) 
<laughs> a few messages in and he's asking me, uh, will you join me in, in my bed? Siri, <laughs> don't get me, don't get my anxiety up. And pussy throw wait. Oh, he asked Siri, will you join? Will he join me in my bed to translate it? Mm -hmm. Um, don't get my anxiety up and pussy throbbing all at once. Hmm. While I've definitely had my fair share of vacation dick, I've been out the game for a few years between long-term relationships and COVID. But he was sweet, looked good as fuck, and this felt a look, this felt like a low pressure situation. So I figured there was no uh, harm in flirting back. Well, those messages got steamy real quick and soon Sexy Surfer Bay was on his way back to our Airbnb to get in the hot tub and keep the night going. My friend stayed in the hot tub for a few rounds of drinks to make sure Bay wasn't a creep and I was all the way comfortable. He didn't need to stay long though because Sexy Surfer Bay and I no longer needed an app to communicate what our bodies were saying to each other. He started kissing my face and grabbing my breasts, moving me Ooh. onto his lap while playing with my pussy. The more I kept squirming away, the more he gripped me up in those strong arms, pulling me closer. He then grabbed my hips and put my thick thighs over his shoulders just above the water and started eating me out. And I just about lost it. Ooh, I'm about to lose it. After I came a few <laughs> times, he stood up with my ass still in his hands and slid his dick inside of me. I was literally shuddering. Not only was this fine ass man fucking me like a Mayan warrior, ravishing me with his kisses between strokes, the tropical background made the experience so much hotter. Just out here in nature, enjoying each other without a care in the world, monkeys, crickets, and other jungle creatures as our audience. At some point, I threw my arms too wild and broke a nearby glass. We laughed and took that pause in... We laughed and took that pause in our rhythm as a sign to switch up the scene and positions. We headed upstairs to the outdoor shower and kept fucking between washing and kissing each other. I was so damn sensual. It was so damn sensual. My pussy is quivering, reminiscing. Mm. When we were done with the shower, I started rubbing oil on my wet breasts, typically post shower moves. And you would have thought I threw tar on a Van Gogh painting. The way he grabbed my hands and whispered, no necesito. In the sexiest voice I've ever heard. Between the passion and effortless energy we shared, it was giving old lovers reunited. <laughs> <laughs> I was in lust and ready for more. We mm. finally made it to the bedroom and it was time for me to show him a little black girl magic. Oh, I sucked his dick like I wanted a new pair of shoes. Deep throat and looking up in his eyes while licking the tip of his dick, catching his spit and slurping his Ooh. balls. I was, he was moaning and muttering sexy Spanish gibberish. Hola, mami, papita, hola, sala. While grabbing Did my you head. Did that? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, who's going with mama and daddy? What's going on? Who entered the room? Okay. Well, grab. What? Papacito, papa dos. While grabbing, <laughs> while grabbing my head and smacking my ass, I stopped before. I missed my moment for back shots and turned around. My knees and face on the bed, ass in the air. He slid his dick back in as I threw it back for all of a minute before he pulled out and came all over me. Ooh. We fell asleep holding each other and my soul is still in Costa Rica because, <laughs> because I'm coming back. Thanks for reading and sharing y'all's dope ass energy and tea every week on the podcast and Patreon. I love y'all. Signed, Lust in Translation. That was really a good That was a good cocktail. one. That was a good one. Thank you so much for sending that. Thank okay. you, girl. So I was going to tell the story that I told on Patreon. If you guys aren't a patron, let me just tell you. I'll give you this snippet. I'm walking across the yard at TSU. I ain't never been to TSU. I don't know what I'm looking for. We're just looking for our other homeboy, me and my homegirl, Carrie. We looking for this other nigga, Jacoby. He a Kappa. So hold that thought. Now, I'm not thinking nothing about it. We're just walking through, trying not to get our sneakers wet because it was raining that weekend. Next thing I know, this nigga reaches across the sidewalk and grabs me like this and oh. pulls me in close. Do you know who it was? Who? Guess. Voodoo. I can't even get it out. Voodoo did. Mm -hmm. He tried to choke you too just now when you tried oh to say it. Yes. He was like, you conjure me up, nigga. He said, he literally said, come to Houston one more time and don't tell me. And I was Were like. Were people looking like, do you know this man? Yes. 
because it's like all these people. And then my homegirl, she, we're walking in a straight line. Did you so like she it? Goes, I did. But that's what <laughs> I was about to get to. So she turns around. She's like, oh my God. So my friend, she has such high energy. She's so protective. So she's like, oh my God. Kiki, are you good? Like, do you know him? Sir, what is your problem? He looked, he let her go on and on and on. And then when she finally piped down, he looked at her and said, but ask her, do she like it though? And I said, see, God damn, this is why I can't be running into you. I was not expecting to see you. This was not a part of the plan. Anyway, that story, that full story, and tell y'all what what transpired after that is available on Patreon. Now I for love the how actual, you just did that. I love how you actual, just did that, though. Mm-hmm. No. Now, for the actual cocktail <laughs> that I will give y'all this week, this one is not as spicy, but it's still a little spicy because the man was Dominican. Now, now he's a black Dominican because, you know. Still Dominican, though. He still, still speaks Espanol? Mm-hmm. Okay. And that should be sounding good. I mean, he was uh-huh. talking to the maid one day and was just telling her, like, to put the clothes up and to get some more trash bags and take this shit to the dry cleaner. But it sounded so good. So anyway, so I meet this guy, friend of a friend, right? Um, And I was not planning to meet anyone that day. Actually, my friend who I met him through, he was supposed to be hooking me up with another one of his friends. But you know, again, you snooze, you lose. Anyway, that night I get home, he texts me and was like, because we exchanged numbers and he was like, can I FaceTime you? So I was like, yeah, sure. Um, cause he was like, I know some people don't really like FaceTime and I was thinking, you already see me at my ugliest. I don't care about FaceTime and like whatever. <laughs> at I this love, point. Yeah. I love FaceTime and like, I don't like to make regular phone calls. Honestly, I don't. I am the girl who's going to FaceTime without the warning. So anyway, he FaceTimes me and we're talking all night. We were up on the phone, like teenagers till like 5 a.m. Why? I love that. And that's so, when I start being like, I'm going to cut some niggas off for you. <laughs> well, I ain't really got too many to cut oh. off. Not, like, we're trying to build a team up. I'm not trying to play tennis, bitch. I need okay. at least a basketball <laughs> squad. <laughs> so, anyway, um, he tells me he's going to take me to dinner the next day. He won't tell me where. He was like, well, it's not one of your three favorite places, but I don't know if you've been, but we're going to see if you'll go. I, I know you'll like it, blah, blah, blah. So, I'm like, okay, cool. So... We go on the date. Date is great. We plan another date. Well, he plans another date on the first date. So things are going well. We're talking. A couple of days go by. But y'all know I'm fast. So this is literally like two days. Mm-hmm. So this happened. I met him on Tuesday. Wednesday, we go on a date. Friday, um, we're having a lunch date. Mm-hmm. So he was like, oh, do you want to go to Putt Shack? Okay. Um, we can go play some games. We can have lunch there. I kind of want a burger. You don't know what you want. So we going to go here. So mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, cool. Well, after I ate a lot of food, I didn't even drink this date, mm-hmm. like at all. That's how I knew I was having a good time because I didn't need any beverages. I didn't have no hookah. I didn't have none of the substances that I typically have. No hooks? No hooks. And it was available wow. when we went to his house. At the putt putt putt. Oh, oh we went to his house. Like, I got hookah at the putt putt. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised though. I this wouldn't. Is they had a hookah at the, the Renaissance Festival, my nigga. <laughs> oh yeah, you did tell me that. <laughs> okay, so anyway, so we ended up going to his house. I spent, this ended up being a 24 hour date, which Ooh. was not the plan. I just didn't go home. I was having such a good time. I had to have a family Zoom That's meeting. That's so you though. Like you what? love to not go home. I sure do. <laughs> I sure you do. You love a 24 hour you. date. I do. I'm moving in. I'm trying to figure out, is there room for my luggage here? Where do my clothes go? If this bitch go? can get her name on the deed, it's on there. <laughs> okay. I don't have to go back. Like, we could just go pick up my things. You can come with me, matter of fact, because you need to tote this stuff. So anyway, we watched some movies. We took a nap. We did all kind of stuff. We were just hanging out, talking, and like, time is going by. I also was supposed to be working that day, and I had forgot about work in the middle of that. Sorry to my Sorry company. to them, them people. Yeah. So anyway, somehow we end up in his bed. But I was like, you know what? I got on a jumpsuit. Y'all know, I don't know why I even do this to myself because it never works. I try to use my clothes as a chastity belt. Like I might put on a waist trainer, mm-hmm. some girdles, um, a one piece set that's going to be hard to pull off, not a dress. You think if they smell that little tire smell, they'll be deterred? No, no I don't even think about the tire smell. I don't oh. think about the smell. I be thinking about having to unhook all that shit and then you got all them indentions on your body. That's what I usually think about. This time I just wore a skims little um, romper like okay. a little shorts romper but I'm like this is one piece it's not coming on. very snug yeah very snug so y'all we were making out like teenagers in his bed and I don't know what kind of Santeria he done put on my ass but I think that man done cast a spell on me somehow some way with my clothes still on he did something down there with his hands on the outside of my clothes. No toys needed. There were no vibrations. No, none of that shit. Just a lot of tongue action, intense eye stares. That's probably where the through spell the came in. Through the clothes. Through the clothes. Y'all, I came through the clothes. 
And I said, you know what? And the next thing you know, I was in the shower. And I'll tell you all the rest of that next week. Spanish people are hardworking people. And he was like, I'm going to And he was like, imagine, it. if I can do that with your clothes on, just imagine what I can do without. And I was like, yeah. I'm, I'm going to go imagine. home. I don't know how you still made it to 24 hours. I would have to go home because I'd be like, we're going to have children. Well, we're not having no children now. Yeah, I'm saying we're going to have some kids, so I'm going to go home. Well, I just needed to get to sex first to see, like, are you talking shit or not? But I'll tell you, I'll tell y'all about that later. How cute those babies would be. You don't even know what he look like. Oh. But he is cute. And you said Dominican. I'm just thinking, like, black and Dominican. You'd be like, oh, look at that. You have little Cardi B's. Is she Dominican? Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. Little Kiki Cardi B's. Little Kiki B's. Oh, my God. Please don't put that on me right now. <laughs> I'm still trying to figure things out. I'm still trying to figure things out. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed my cocktail that didn't even have sex, but it was still feeling good. Still, so Yeah, your pussy still got eight. <laughs> well, no, he didn't eat my pussy. He did something. The nigga did, did something. something. I told you he put a spell on me. I am convinced. I love it. And we love to hear it. We love to see mm-hmm. it. I'm glad you felt good, y'all. Thank you so much for listening to this week's episode of Cocktails. I feel like it was a great episode. I think so, too. Um, remember to sign up for Patreon. Uh, Patreon.com slash cocktails. New bonus episodes every week. And uh, you also will have a better chance of winning the Love Crave giveaway. But even if you don't join Patreon, we still have some giveaways for you. Check the description box for the details. Um, bonus episodes... I guess that's it. We can't think of it. Um, Follow us on Instagram at Cocktails Podcast. I'm at Kiki Said So. I'm at Coffee Bean Dean. And until next week, you guys, goodbye. Goodbye. I'm sorry, but the person you called has a voice mailbox that has not been set up yet. Goodbye. Bye. 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 Bye.